Now, in the three states of matter, we're looking at the heating and the cooling curve of water. This is a great introductory um, experiment to do with the learners because you'll be establishing a lot of the skills that you're going to be using throughout the rest of the year. So they'll be working in pairs or in small groups. Um, they're going to be working with a flame to heat a substance. They're going to be taking readings, temperature readings. So before you start off, first establish, do they know how to use a thermometer? All right. Um, if they hold the thermometer, down here on the bulb, it's going to affect the temperature. If they, uh, there's a little plastic piece on the end, they can hold that, or they can hold it at the top when they're taking a reading. The thermometer be needs to be in the substance that's being heated, and preferably not on the, on the base of the glass, because if it's on the base of the glass, it's going to actually be heated directly from the flame. All right. So a couple of things, and then uh, make sure that they know how to read the thermometer, practice, um, making sure the eye is level when they take the reading and that uh, if uh, your thermometer has markings for every second degree or every fifth degree they know where to take it uh, this one marks every degree so it's an easy one to read um, then what we're going to do is place the thermometer in the beaker take some crushed ice The next thing you're going to need to establish with the learners is how to use the gas burner, how to adjust the flame, the safety, turning off the gas when they're done, uh, playing with matches in the lab is more dangerous than playing with matches outside of the lab. So just establish your ground rules before you let the learners get hold of things in the lab. You're going to show the learners how to draw up a table where they can record every minute for the temperature reading, as well as a graph where they can then actually record the heating and cooling curve of water. Establish all those and then get them busy. You, you're wanting to evaluate their ability to work safely in the lab before you bring out the other chemicals, uh, whether they can work in a group, follow instructions, take recordings of uh, whatever they are recording and then interpret it and present it in an uh, easy to read format. So right now I'm watching my thermometer here and it's gone down to zero degrees Celsius. Right, so I've got my stopwatch and my papers ready. If they try to get them to work in pairs, if you can, ideally, otherwise in groups, and have one of them take the readings on the thermometer while the other records the uh, data, the degree Celsius. And then halfway through or so, you can get them to swap over and uh, take a turn doing something else in the experiment. I'm going to uh, use the gas because I've got that option and it's going to take me less time. So um, my gas is open. Get to use this as, a, as an opportunity just to teach them safety uh, around the lab since they're going to be using it for the rest of the year. And I'm going to adjust the flame. And then move my stand. And now I've got my thermometer and if I have a look at the reading now, I'm going to start recording my time and at zero, the reading is zero degrees Celsius. I don't have to write down one minute for each of these minutes here. I've recorded that at the top of the table. I just write down one, keep it going and then uh, for the temperature, what I want to do as well is just keep this thermometer moving in the water so that it's not just getting a reading from one part of the beaker, but from the whole beaker. I'm on 35 seconds now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a recording every minute. I've been recording the readings now for three minutes and initially it went up slightly because the thermometer is actually in the liquid around the ice. So now I'm getting three degrees and for the last three minutes, it's been three degrees. We're just getting on to uh, four degrees now. So I want to move it around a bit in the water to make sure that I'm getting uh, not from one spot. And I'm still getting three degrees. 
So I'll continue recording while it's staying consistent and uh, the learners need to discover that for themselves. Don't go ahead and tell them that beforehand, let them discover it themselves. Another thing is just to keep the gas uh, flame fairly low. I started off this with the, with the gas burning a bit uh, stronger and it, the ice melted too quickly. So you want to keep it low enough so that the ice just melts slowly. Now we've been taking readings for 19 minutes and uh, initially we saw condensation on the outside of the glass and then as the temperature went up that cleared and then little bubbles started forming at about 85 degrees Celsius and then at uh, towards 100 degrees Celsius it started boiling rapidly and now it's been boiling for the last two minutes at about 105 degrees Celsius, 104. Uh, I'm going to take another reading now for my 20 minutes and I'm going to actually turn off the gas now and we're going to see what happens as that begins to cool down. But I can see that steam is coming off, there's a change of, of phase happening here. The bubbles on the inside, so the liquid is now creating a gas, not only on the surface of the liquid, but inside the liquid bubbles are forming as changing phase. Now I've stopped the heat and we're going to watch what happens as it begins to cool. And I'll continue reading for another couple of minutes. Now I've got my readings in my table and I'm going to fill them in in my graph, my temperature versus time. And uh, it took a bit longer than I expected, and so I had to extend my graph a bit. Um, so starting off with zero, zero minutes and the temperature was zero. After a minute, it was one degree, two minutes, three degrees, and I'll continue to fill this in. So now I have my graph and uh, you can see that some of the dots are slightly out. We don't change that, we leave them as they are. And then we draw that line that connects the dots, just evens them out. Um, but we want to keep those readings like this one that, that looks slightly out because there could be a factor that caused that and we don't want to take that away. And we'll use this to interpret the kinetic molecular theory. Now we've done our graph and we've seen that the temperature of the water remained constant while there was still ice in the water, frozen. And then it started to lift up, started to spike up and got hotter, eventually reaching boiling point where it evened out again and continued. And then started to drop off once we turned that uh, gas off and it was no longer receiving heat, cooling down towards ambient temperature. So you can see from the heating and the cooling curve of water that uh, those phase changes taking place. And then it took a lot of energy. So, what, so you can explain to the learners that when, while there was ice in the water, uh, the temperature wasn't really going up because it was taking extra energy, latent energy, potential energy building up while it changed from ice to a solid to a liquid. And then you heated it and in that liquid form the temperature rose and then as it started to change phase from a liquid to a gas, again we see that temperature evening out and remaining constant while it was changing from a liquid to a gas because now again it's taking that, that potential, that latent energy to change phase. Once we turn the temperature down and we turn the heat off, we see that it remains a liquid, but that the temperature slowly starts to go down and we see the cooling curve of water. So I continued to read um, until I'd been recording for 30 minutes in order to get that cooling curve of water as well. Uh, and there was no phase change during that. In terms of the uh, kinetic molecular theory, you can take some beans and put them in a container and they can see that they are tightly packed together as the, the molecules in a solid would be. And then after that phase change, when it's liquid, you can swirl them around, you can see the spaces are starting to increase between those uh, particles, between the molecules, and then a gas would be the beans filling the air, basically, uh, throwing them out into the room, and they start to spread out. And for each of those phase changes, it requires a lot of energy. Uh, thanks very much, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Get the learners, if there's extra time, to repeat the experiment and to check their results or get each of the groups to compare the results and then talk about what factors could have influenced the experiment in terms of uh, someone doing it near a, a breezy window and their temperature not going up the same as the others.